Hi guys, it's Vanessa Levin from Pre-K Pages. How are you? Thanks for stopping by. I'm gonna give you all a few minutes to come in. I want you all to join us tonight. We're gonna to be talking about multi-sensory strategies. So I really want to get to know you guys better. So if you could, in the comments below, tell me where you're coming from tonight. Our last few broadcasts, we've had people from all over the world. We had a bunch of people from Peru last time, um, New Zealand, Australia. Um, we had people all over the United States, Mexico, Canada. Let me know where you're coming from tonight um, in the comments below. We're going to be talking about uh, multi-sensory strategies, Florida. Hi, Johanna. Thank you for joining us. We're going to be talking about multi-sensory strategies tonight, and those are the types of strategies where kids are using all of their senses at once. They're seeing, hearing, saying, and doing all at the same time. So it makes learning much easier when we use these strategies. Hey, Alicia from Ohio and Jenny from Arizona, North Carolina. Laura's coming at us from North Carolina. I'm Vanessa Levin from Pre-K Pages. I'm coming at you live from Dallas, Texas. And I just want to welcome everybody to this live Facebook broadcast. Um, some of you may be new to Facebook Live, um, and if this is your first live broadcast, just uh, type the word new in the comments below. I just love this new feature they have. Um, it just allows me to connect with you all on a whole other level that I can't do just by broadcasting out on Facebook with posts. Now I can actually talk with you and you can ask me questions. The first few broadcasts that I've done here on Facebook I didn't take as many questions because my um, camera, my uh, phone keeps freezing up. Hey there. And new, excellent, yay. Let me know if you like this live feature. It's super cool. But my, uh, hey from Puerto Rico, um, my phone keeps freezing up on the comments. So I'm going to try really hard tonight to make sure that I get to your questions. Hey from Michigan, I'm a fellow Michigander. Um, although I am transplanted Texan now. So we are going to be, uh, thank you for stopping by. Thanks for letting me know if you're new in the comments and letting me know where you're coming at us from tonight. I am super excited that you're here. I'm Vanessa Levin from Pre-K Pages and I thought we would talk tonight about multi-sensory strategies. If you're familiar with multi-sensory strategies at all, um, just leave, uh, just say yes in the comments below and I welcome all the newbies. That's great. Um, but if you're familiar with multisensory strategies, um, let me know in the comments below. Um, so just say yes. And if you're new, type new in the comments and let me know where you're from. We have people from New York and Iowa, Kentucky. Absolutely. Um, I am so glad that you're here. A lot of people from Arizona, Fort Worth. Yes. And my neighbor. Excellent. Hi there. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for commenting. I really appreciate it. Um, I am just so excited to be able to connect with you all on this live Facebook platform. I absolutely love it. I think this is my fourth, maybe my fifth broadcast. I do these every Monday and Thursday, 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. And I am going to be better about um, looking at your questions and looking at the camera. My camera's over here and my face is over here, so I have to look over here. Um, what we're going to be talking about, uh, Louisiana, excellent. If you want to let your friends know about this broadcast, excellent. Um, go ahead and share this with them. There should be some kind of a share button down there somewhere. Um, one of the people, hey, from Boston. Um, one of the people last time was asking me, hey, Sarah, how to subscribe to these um, live broadcasts. So if you're new to this Facebook Live feature, um, I broadcast every Monday and Thursday at 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern, and there is a subscribe button, so you can be notified whenever I go live. Um, 
but because this feature is so new, it's only been around for a little over two weeks, um, that button for subscribing to these live things, it, it appears differently on everyone's device and computer. Um, I have not been able to successfully find it on my uh, phone. I have found it on my desktop. It only appears to me at the end of the video, um, which is great because the first day it went live, it appeared in the beginning and you were like, how do I know if I want to subscribe to this or not? Is it any good? Um, so look for the subscribe button so you can be notified whenever I go live. And I also have um, <laughs> freezing. The, the, the freezing of the screen is going to depend on your connection to the internet. Um, so if I freeze up, you're going to want to refresh your browser, whether you're on a device or on a desktop computer. Um, so just make sure you have a strong connection and you can hit refresh and it'll bring you right back in here and you won't miss a thing. Um, this um, broadcast will also, it's recording right now, so as soon as I'm done talking on this broadcast, which could be forever because I talk a lot, um, as soon as I'm done, it will be available on the Pre-K Pages Facebook page for you to watch um, at any time. So if you want to go back and tag your friends, share it with people, you're welcome to do that. Um, so we are here. Hey, Honeybees Child Care. We are here to talk about multi-sensory strategies tonight. Thanks, everybody, for letting us know where you're coming at us from in the comments. I really appreciate that. Let me know as we go along if you have any questions. I've received uh, several questions um, over the last five broadcasts or so that I've done. Requests for people asking how to help your kids identify numbers or letters. And so we're gonna jump right in there now that we see that there's some people here. Um, so I'm gonna address a little bit of that in this broadcast. Now these broadcasts aren't very long, um, so I'm not gonna get into too much depth, but I am gonna give you some strategies you can take back and use with your kids at home or in the classroom right away. So a little backstory on um, identifying letters and numbers. Identifying letters, we'll just use letters as an example right now, it's only one small part of the literacy process. So oftentimes we give it a lot more importance um, than it needs to have. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes into making a child a literate child. So identifying letters is only one of those. And the same goes for numbers. Identifying numbers really is, is not the be all end all of uh, math. There is so much more that goes into building a strong number sense with kids than just identifying numbers. So I'm not gonna get into those pieces tonight, but I am going to talk about um, strategies to help kids identify letters and numbers. So if you're providing them with that strong foundation in literacy and math, these are some strategies that you can use to help them with a number and letter identification. Um, so they're not, it's not the whole picture, it's just one small part. We're gonna be using um, multi-sensory strategies to do that. So let's start off by defining what multi-sensory strategies are. These are strategies that are engaging all the senses. So they're things that kids can see, hear, they can say it, they can touch it, and they can do it. So they're doing all of these things at once. So you're engaging all of their senses at the same time. Okay, so I'm gonna give you some examples of what that looks like in just a minute. But the reason that we want to use multi-sensory strategies in the classroom with kids is because when used in combination, all of these multi-sensory strategies, the seeing, hearing, saying, touching, and doing, all of these strategies, when used in combination, are going to help concepts like identifying numbers and letters stick in long-term memory. So have any of you ever had a child where you've taught them something, let's say on a Monday, and you've taught it and taught it and taught it, and you know they got it, you're just sure of it. Um, they showed you they knew it, uh, everything went well. And the next day, they come into your classroom, and you say, and remember what we learned yesterday about whatever it was, and they look at you like, what, huh? And you're like, no, I know you know this, I know you know it. That is because that thing that you taught, whatever that was, you did a great job at it, 
and you did a great job at that time, it just didn't go into long-term memory. Um, and it takes a lot of repetition to get concepts to stick in long-term memory. And any of you who've taught children before know that not every child is the same when it comes to the number of times they have to be taught something or exposed to something before they retain that information. So some children may need to have, it, have an exposure to that concept 50 times before they get it. Another child might need 100 exposures to that concept before they get it. Another child might need 150 exposures to that concept before they get it. So these strategies, multi-sensory strategies, when used in combination, are highly effective to help information stick into the child's long-term memory. So, I'm going to show you a few things that you can do with kids that are very simple and easy to help, um, help them retain that information in long-term memory. So the first thing is stuff from the dollar store, right? I know you love the dollar store. So the first thing is hair gel. Um, and this is from the Dollar Tree. It's just whatever their clear hair gel is, if they have it, it's a nice big bottle. It's 16 ounces here. Um, so I get some... Oh, the baby pick. Oh, that's a good question. Um, remind me to talk about those later. Um, Abilene, yay. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do for your one of your first multi-sensory strategies is get some clear hair gel from the dollar store. My favorite is the Dollar Tree. I have a, a lot of them near my house. It's very easy to me for me to get to. So get some hair gel, and then you're going to want some food coloring any color that you like, um, some food coloring, and maybe some glitter if you like. I know there's there's uh, people who are in team glitter and people who are not on team glitter. That's your choice. Um, and then get yourself some Ziploc bags, okay? So here, I'm going to put it on a cookie sheet for you so you can see it a little better. It's kind of hard to hold up um, without something behind it. So this is my Ziploc bag. I've squirted some hair gel in there and some food coloring, whatever color you like, you put in there, okay? And then if you want, you can add some glitter, okay? There is no magic recipe. This is all kind of just experimentation. So you fill it up just so that if it's too full, you'll know because when you push on it, you won't be able to see clear lines. So if it's too full, you can't do that. If there's not enough gel in the bag, then um, it, it'll show all the stuff behind there, you know, all the time. So you'll, you'll, you'll know, you'll get a feel for it. Okay, so then once you have that, you're also gonna want a packing tape. You've made these before, awesome, yes. Colored hair gel works great too, yes. My Dollar Tree has just the, the clear stuff and I like to choose my color, so. Yes, use real Ziploc bags, Jessica has a good point. The cheap ones, <laughs> the cheap ones don't last as long. Um, does it have a scent? I, well, let's find out, shall we? Mm, it has a very light scent. I, I don't, uh, I don't, I am very, very sensitive to scents and I'm not sensitive to that at all. But once it's in the bag, you can't smell it. Then you're gonna want to, um, you're gonna wanna use your, the nice, there are certain things you can get at the dollar store and certain things you don't wanna get at the dollar store. Um, yes, tape, the, the top is taped shut, absolutely. Packing tape, I don't know if you can see it, it's pretty clear, but I packing tape this thing so you can't packing tape it anymore because you know what, what's gonna happen. Now I will say, these don't last forever. That's okay. Because hair gel costs a dollar and you get a bunch of these Ziploc bags, 100 or 250 in a box, and some food coloring and you're not gonna be out more than a dime per activity. So yes, using the tape, keep it closed. You squirt the clear hair gel in there, some food coloring, glitter if you'd like to. And then when you put it, I'm gonna hold it up on my cookie tray again. When you put it in the bag, whoops, then the kids can um, press their finger. The A is the only one I can write backwards. <laughs> Maybe not. 
then you can make the ladder in there. It's hard to do when it's hanging up. Um, so this is a multi-sensory strategy, but the way that you make it multi-sensory, if you're just having them make shapes in there, that's, that's a completely different thing. So the way you're going to do that is you're going to, um, what age is this for? I use it with four-year-olds. You could possibly use it free exploration with threes if you're sure they're not going to destroy the bag and certainly with fives. Um, this is, I'm Vanessa Levin from Pre-K Pages, so everything that I do here is geared for um, four-year-olds, but you can adjust it down or up a little bit. Vacuum seal bags, very good. Um, so here I've got my bag, my clear hair gel, my food coloring, and when it's placed, and I've packing taped the top shut, when I've placed it on a flat surface, um, the children can use their finger. But this is the way you make it multi-sensory. So here's how multi-sensory works. You show the child a symbol. So let's say you're holding up um, a letter. And you say, this is a T. Can you say T? Child says T. As you're still holding it up in front of them, they're going to say T. Now this is an A, so let's make a T. I don't want to confuse anybody. Let's make a T. I just grabbed the first letter that was in my box there. Okay. Can you say T? The child says T. And as they say the T, they're going to make the T. So they're seeing it because you're holding it up. They're saying it while they do it. They're touching it. Um, they're seeing, hearing, saying, and doing all at the same time. And they need to keep that, that connection with their finger on the bag as they're saying it so that connection um, to the brain is not broken. Yet you can use bigger bags, you can use bigger Ziploc bags. Unfortunately, the frame on this video is very small, so I had to use a little one. Capital or lowercase first, um, that's a big controversy. We could do a whole entire broadcast on that. Um, I subscribe to the philosophy that we teach all letters all the time because that's the way they appear in our environment naturally. Like when we go to the store, everything's not in all capitals or all lowercase. And then there's certain programs that require it a different way. So there's just, there's, let's just say there's different philosophies on that. Yes, you could use the letter sound at the same time. Absolutely. Um, there's lots of ways to do. Hey, Tanya, you can go back and watch the broadcast when we're done, and I go through all the explanations of what's in the bag. So as soon as we're done, this will be available um, on replay for everyone to watch. All right. Oh, I'm so glad you all are commenting. You're going very, uh, very uh, quickly with the comments. Yes. Um, so this is a multi-sensory strategy. They're seeing it because you're holding it up. You're saying it, they're saying it, they're doing it. So all of these things are happening at the same time. When children are doing multisensory activities, they're internalizing the shape and the feel of the letters. And that's what helps children retain information in their long-term memory. So we covered one of the activities already. This is the gel bag, and if you're just joining us, when I'm done here tonight, you can go back and watch the, um, the replay. It'll be right here in the Pre-K Pages Facebook page, um, so you can catch it from the beginning. And there's also a blog post that goes with this. Um, so all of these ideas I'm talking about are in that blog post, and I believe there, it's being posted in the comments as we speak. I do have other stuff to talk about. All right, so the next one is um, wiki sticks. If you don't have um, wiki sticks, you have to get some. These are waxed strings. Um, people ask me, where do you buy wiki sticks? Um, you can get them at any teacher store or on Amazon. And there's a link to them in the blog post that's being posted in the comments. So I don't know if you, this is pretty light, but I have these. They're available. There's probably a link in the blog post. This is just very simple. These are just little letter cards that are open. You see how they're open there? And the children take the wiki sticks. These are waxed strings, so they have a lot of tactile feel to them. And you're going to do the exact same thing. You're going to show them the letter. And again, I don't have the same letter. <laughs> and name the letter for them. And then they are going to say the letter and 
form it on the card. Do you see? And these stick to paper. Let me do it down here and then hold it up for you. These stick to paper, but they don't harm it. There we go. So they can form the letter right there and see how it sticks to the paper? And it will stick to laminated paper as well. And then the child can um, touch it and say it. So they're seeing, hearing, saying, and doing all at the same time. So I do have a, a printable uppercase set of these um, on the blog in the blog post. Um, and these are called wiki sticks. They're waxed strings, okay? And they stick to paper. So the, ch the child can place these on the outline of the letter. And you're going to repeat. Yes, wiki sticks, they're great for all kinds of things. I love them. Play-Doh could work too, absolutely. Um, so that, again, you're showing them the letter. You're saying the name of the letter. They're saying the name of the letter. And they're forming the letter. Yes, lowercase would be great too. You can do this for anything. You can even do this with sight words with older children. Um, so wiki sticks, that's my other multi-sensory technique. So the children are seeing, hearing, saying, and doing all at the same time. Um, this is the strategy. Multi-sensory strategies are strategies that help children get information or concepts into their long-term memory. Wiki sticks can be found at most teacher stores. Um, and on Amazon, of course, and um, I have seen some called Benderoos, that's another brand name, at Dollar General, but they're not a dollar. I don't know why they called it Dollar General. Um, Amazon, yes, you can buy anything on Amazon, but just look up Wiki Sticks, W-I-K-K-I-S-T-I-S. And this, this would be an activity um, that I would probably do in a small group. Good question, Christina. I would do this with a small group of children. Um, so you could make multiple copies of the letters. They could each have the same one. You could show them the card and say, this is the letter, whatever. And they're going to say the name of the letter and they're going to form it on their card, their little mat here, and they're going to say it at the same time. This would probably be a small group activity. Once I've done this in small group with all the children, then I'll put it in my alphabet center for free exploration because kids love wiki sticks. They love to put these and stick them onto the little outlines. So certainly can go into a center after I've done it in small group with every children. You can totally use these for shapes too, Corey. You could use them for anything. Oh yes, car trips too, road trip activity. Yes, wiki sticks are quiet. They don't make a mess. Um, they're perfect. Okay. Thank you, Crystal. I think Crystal just posted a link to wiki sticks maybe. Um, all right, so we're going to move on to the next one. Yes, so if you're just joining us, I want to thank you for tuning in. First of all, I'm Vanessa Levin from Pre-K Pages, and we still have more activities to go over. Um, but tonight we're talking about multi-sensory strategies, and these are strategies that um, children can use to help retain information in their long-term memory. So these are activities that incorporate all the senses, seeing, hearing, saying, and doing, touching, and feeling all at the same time. So that's what we're talking about tonight. So if you're just joining us and you missed the first part, um, you can go back and watch this live broadcast right here on my Facebook page as soon as I'm done broadcasting live. So as soon as I stop talking, <laughs> which we don't know when that will be, um, you can come back and watch this at any time. So you can catch it from the beginning, okay? You can make your own wiki sticks. I tried it once and it was way more trouble than it was worth. So, <laughs> so some things are worth buying and some things are worth making and wiki sticks I think are worth buying. Um, thank you, Marsha. You're always such a good supporter in here. I really appreciate you showing up, Marsha. She is a, a huge supporter. Absolutely. Um, spring ideas for sensory. I have spring. Um, if you go to prekpages.com and go to themes, I have a whole spring theme and there's all kinds of activities there. So next we're going to talk about something else that you can do. Now I've been holding up these letters here throughout this broadcast. These are sandpaper. Now this is a video so you can't, you can't touch it yourself. 
Um, but this is sandpaper right here. Now I have made these myself before. I couldn't find mine tonight. But these are sandpaper letters. So what you can do if you'd like to make your own, they're very simple to do. You can go to the dollar store and get the cheap sandpaper um, and cut it out into the shapes of the letters. You can actually use a stencil and trace and then cut them out, glue them to some heavy cardboard or tag board. And then you've got a set. You can do upper and lowercase and you'll have a set of these cards and these are fabulous um, for helping children retain information. And so again, you're going to show them a letter card. So we never asked a, a child to um, name a letter or say a letter without showing them a model, um, especially if they're learning letters, you know, so we're talking about little kids. Okay, so this is, these are sandpaper letters. This is a very, very old strategy that's been around for a really long time. I've been using it in my classroom for 20 years, um, and they're called sandpaper letters. And again, you're going to show the child a letter and say, this is the letter, name it for them. So this is a T. Can you say T? They say T. And as they're saying T, they're tracing the formation of it. So you're going to want to model for them the correct letter formation as well so that they can really internalize the shape and the feel of the letter. So they're saying T as they're making the T on the card. So I would have a set of these to use um, in the classroom. So you can make these yourself using some cheap um, sandpaper from the dollar store because you know the sandpaper from the dollar store really isn't good for much else. It's not really for sanding. Um, and you can make these. You can also buy these. Um, they, see, they tend to be rather expensive. So this is one thing um, that I prefer to make myself and I do have a set of homemade ones. Um, but there should be a link to these in the blog post that we've been sharing at the link my hands on strategies for learning um, in the blog post there. Um, I found them at Amazon teacher stores and you could glue pre-made stencils to um, absolutely you could. Okay. So that's another multi-sensory strategy that you can use. So, so far we've talked about the gel bags. Okay, as a multi-sensory strategy, we've talked about wiki sticks as a multi-sensory strategy, and we've talked about um, the sandpaper letters as a multi-sensory strategy. Yes, I do, and, and, and Tanya has a good point. After I've introduced this to the children, and I've done this in um, small group, and we've traced it with our finger and all that. I put these in my art center with blank paper, copy paper, and flat crayons. And then they can make rubbings of these. And they love that. Yes, absolutely. I've never taught multi-age choice. I've always taught just fours um, so and fives. I've taught fives before, too. So sandpaper letters. And then another one that I like um, so if sandpaper letters aren't your thing, if that sounds like a lot of work, this one is a lot easier. And um, it is super easy and cheap. So this is glitter glue. I've also, before glitter glue existed, or cheap glitter glue existed, I used to make my own, just take my own white Elmer's glue and put uh, food coloring in it and make colored uh, and, and glitter and make my own. Um, so you get some uh, glitter, glitter glue and some index cards. And then on the index cards, you can write um, letters, one letter on each card. Um, so I would make like an uppercase E on here. I would um, you know, write that with a marker and then go over that. And I didn't pre-do this one. I, don't, I couldn't find my set of these. And make dots of glue over the top of the letter. So you see how I'm I'm doing that as I go and then let it dry. So if you're in a humid place like Florida, let it sit for several days um, until it's completely dry. And when it's done, you'll, you'll have a nice um, tactile letter card here, very similar to the sandpaper letters, only it will be made of glue. And they're colorful too, and the kids love them. They call these the bumpy cards in my class, yes. Absolutely. Sensory can help with retention of information and helping to get information to stick in a child's long-term memory. Okay, so after you make your set of cards, you'll have them forever because the glue will dry and they'll be nice and, and sturdy. And if anything happens to them, it, 
get your glue out and make some more. So absolutely. Absolutely. This can help with homeschooling too. Absolutely. Okay. So I do have, I have one more and I will say that I could not find my, um, my pie pan for this one. Yes. Glitter glue at the dollar store. Absolutely. The last one I have is um, a pie pan and you can get these at the Dollar Tree and the disposable kind that are like made out of tin. Okay. So the last multi-sensory strategy that I want to share with you, um, we're talking about multi-sensory strategies tonight to help children retain information in their long-term memory. And um, the last one is a pie pan. So you get your uh, pie. It doesn't even have to be a pie pan. It could be a square pan. It doesn't matter. Just some kind of a pan that has it's a shallow lip around it. And you put... Um, cornmeal in there. Now they call it, I think they call it corn flour in the UK, um, but put some cornmeal in there, a very shallow little bit, okay? And you'll know if it's too much because when you stick your finger in it to make letters, you won't be able to see the bottom. So if that's too much and if, if there's not enough in the bottom, you'll be able to see the bottom. So you get your pie pan or whatever kind of pan you have, you put your cornmeal in it, and then you're going to do the exact same thing. The, the, the technique is always the same. You show the child the letter, you say the name of the letter, you invite the child to say the name of the letter, and as they say the name of the letter, they form that letter in the pie pan, in the cornmeal. And this is a fun one. Uh, my kids love this. This is another really old strategy that's been around forever and that I've used with great success with children in my classroom, helping them retain information. So they're, we're using a multi-sensory strategy, see it, hear it, say it, do it, and touch it. Um, what I'm holding is a sandpaper letter, yes, um, but the strategy I was just sharing was a pie pan with cornmeal inside. All right, so that brings us to the end of the strategies. I wanna know what questions you all have. Thanks, Raquel. What questions do you have about multi-sensory strategies? If you have any questions, pop them in right now. I'll go through and see if I missed any. I know some of you had suggestions. Oh, my finger is showing there, isn't it? Some of you had suggestions for other broadcasts, and I certainly will go back and look at those suggestions um, for the next time. Um, we did this with salt. Yes, I used to do it with salt too. And then I had a, a child who always had cuts on his fingers and he used to cry. Um, yes, absolutely. You can do that with salt. You can spray a baking tray with shaving foam. Absolutely. Shaving foam is great. A lot of our child care centers in the United States have banned it though. Um, tuned in late. What are wiki sticks? This broadcast will be available for you to watch from the beginning. Um, as soon as I'm done talking tonight. So as soon as I'm done, you can go back and catch the replay on the Pre-K Pages Facebook page. Um, oh, there's my finger again. Yep, salt in a pan, absolutely. How often do you go live? That's a good question, Megan. Um, every Monday and Thursday at 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Oh, I remember somebody asked about the pictures that were on the wall behind me. I'm releasing a new dramatic play kit tomorrow. It's gonna to be all about caring for babies. And those are the picture word cards. So it's a little tiny sneak peek of the new dramatic play kit that I have over at Pre-K Pages tomorrow. Okay. Sight words, I do have a page on my uh, website at Pre-K Pages about sight words. Uh, I think when it comes to sight words with older kids, it's all about multi-sensory, it has to be. Um, colored rice, absolutely, you can use all kinds of stuff. Take these ideas and adapt them to use them. Um, total physical response, TPR, yes, I like that too. Um, small groups, what about small groups? What was the question about small groups? Do you do these I do these activities in small group, I do. Anytime I, I do an activity with kids, I like to introduce it um, in small group. And then once um, the children understand it, so like the gel bags, for example, once I've done it with everybody in small group and I, I think they've got it, um, then I'll put them out for independent practice at centers. Thank you, Jody. Jody has a look at a cornmeal sensory tray. Wonderful. 
Excellent. Okay. Shaving cream and food coloring. Yes. Montessori is a great resource for those, um, those sandpaper letters and they are pricey. Yes. That's why I like to make them. Um, yes, there's lots of schools of thought on using food. I do understand that you could totally adapt these ideas for sight words. Um, yes. Sprinkles could work in the pan, sure. Okay. So when they make the letter in the pan, do you see the bottom of the pan? Yes, that's the concept. So as they're making the letter in the pan with their finger in the cornmeal, then you can see the bottom of the pan. So that's why it's good to have, I say a pie pan, because those are usually silver. And when you put cornmeal in there, um, when they stick their finger in, then the silver shines through. Yep, you could use sand. Absolutely. Um, sand could, could totally work for that. This is a regularly scheduled broadcast every Monday and Thursday at 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. And there should be a subscribe button somewhere around here. Um, it, it depends on what device you're watching me on uh, as to where the subscribe button appears. I have only successfully found the subscribe button. Um, on desktop at the end of a broadcast. If, if you watch this to the very end, it will come up and say, do you want to subscribe to pre-K pages? And you hit yes. Uh, teaching letters in order? No, I don't teach them in order. Um, I believe that we're bombarded by letters. They're all around us. And so we're learning all the letters all the time. I do have a page um, uh, on my website um, called No More Letter of the Week. Um, and there's a free article there you can download all about this, all about that, sorry. Uh, pudding, yes, and small groups. Thank you, Raquel. Thank you, Helen. Um, wonderful. How early could you start doing this? This really depends on your child and their ability levels. Um, so you'll have to take that in, into consideration. Anything that they might ingest, you know, if their child is still at the point where they're putting things in their mouth and you might wanna avoid some of these things like the gel bag, we wouldn't want that to get in their mouth. Um, and uh, you know, you wanna make sure the glue is dry and all that. Um, groups for homeschool. I, I love, um, for homeschooling resources, I love Crystal and Comp. Um, Crystal has a blog. Um, she's a homeschooling mom. Um, frugal, frugal fun for boys. Uh, there's tons and tons and tons of homeschooling blogs out there um, on online. Um, Kids Activities blog is another one. They do some homeschooling stuff. Yes, you don't want to use salt with toddlers. Okay. Which center would you put the gel bag in, art or writing? I would probably put it in writing, but it could really go anywhere. You could put it in the math center and they could make numbers or <laughs> it could really go anywhere. Um, Multi-sensory, yes, they can, it, can, it can be used to inspire children. Um, let's see, whipped cream in a Ziploc bag and drew letters. Yes, you could totally do that. And, it, yes, and then the colors mixed, wonderful. Yes, you could tape, if you're, if you're looking to um, use a pie pan that doesn't have silver on the bottom, you can totally um, put paper in the bottom. I've done that before. Yes. Yes, yeah, for some kids who have sensory needs, this um, gel bag might be helpful. Yes, if they don't want to touch gooey stuff. Okay. How many children in each small group? I advocate no more than five uh, because as you give each child individual attention, you're gonna take too long to get back to the first one. Uh, do you group students by ability? That depends on what you're trying to teach. Uh, so for some things I might and some things I don't. Uh, at age two, would they retain this? I think age two is all about ex exposure and exploration. I don't think they need any direct instruction. Um, every time we sing, they cover their ears. Oh my, uh, it, that might, you know, you might look at some, um, great resources like, um, Lemon Lime Adventures has some great sensory processing information, um, uh, just for you to think about, of course, not a diagnosis, but, um, 
I would definitely look at Lemon Lime Adventures uh, for that issue, Marcia. Excellent. Thank you guys so much for coming tonight. I do want to encourage you, um, if this was your first live broadcast with me, welcome. And I am live. I'm Vanessa Levin from Pre-K Pages. And I go live every Monday and Thursday, 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. And we talk about all kinds of things. So far, some of my broadcasts, we've done um, a fine motor math activity. Um, we've done all kinds of ways to use plastic Easter eggs uh, in the classroom for learning with young children. Um, we've done, we had Eric Litwin on live and uh, breaking news, I talked with everybody's favorite early childhood guru today and she and I are planning a special broadcast just for you this July, so you're going to want to stay tuned. Um, I can't tell you who it is just yet. Hey, from Tijuana. All right. So we talked about multi-sensory strategies tonight. I hope you got some ideas you can take back and use with your kids at home or in the classroom. Um, watch this broadcast from the beginning if you're just joining us live so you can get all the good, uh, great ideas. Um, we talked about gel bags, wiki sticks, sandpaper letters and glue letters and using a pie pan tonight to help children retain information um, in their long-term memory using multi-sensory strategies. So I want you to share this broadcast with your friends, tag them in the comments, and let me know where you're from. I get so excited to see people from all over the world um, joining our live broadcast. Our last live broadcast reached 14,000 people, and I'm just super excited about that. At the... I don't know what that is, the conference. I don't live in California. I live in Texas, but I'd love to go. Uh, where can I find the sandpaper stencils? Oh, you couldn't find them on Amazon? Oh, I, that's where I got mine. Um, I would call them sandpaper letters, perhaps. But yeah, I got mine on Amazon. Learning Resources is one of my favorite vendors for that type of stuff. Lakeshore Learning is another. Um, I'm sure they both have them. Um, thank you, Karen. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thanks, Stephanie in Florida, Dorothy in North Carolina. And also, don't forget to comment below with um, suggestions for future broadcasts. Um, I do look at these comments and I do reply to them all. Um, might give me a couple hours. Um, and uh, I'll, I do uh, take your recommendations or your suggestions into consideration when I do plan these broadcasts. Hey, Monterey, Mexico, wonderful, Missouri, excellent. Hey guys, thanks a lot for stopping by. I'm so glad you made it tonight. I will see you again. Yes, the C-A-E-Y-C, -E yes. But I wasn't invited, so I can't go to the party unless I'm invited. <laughs> so I won't be there, sorry. I'm on, I am on the board of our local A-E-Y-C. Um, and I do go to that one every year. All right, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Tune in Thursday night at 7 p.m. for our next broadcast. Have a great night. Bye.